Hi all. Uh, so we are beginning our current affairs sessions for fourth of September. Uh, this uh, Holonga Par Gibbon Sanctuary has been in news, and there are many news which has been coming. I saw an article in Assam Tribune as well, and this I have been expecting for long that there will be a question on Holonga Gibbon. Okay. So the name of wildlife sanctuary is Holonga Par Gibbon Sanctuary. Okay. So you will have to understand that this is a wildlife sanctuary, life sanctuary. Okay, basically, wildlife sanctuary are for species a particular species protection. Okay, so the species over here is flock gibbon. Okay, so this is the only ape which is found in India. Only ape, which is found in India. Okay, so what distinguishes an ape from a primate or monkey? So the basic difference is that ape has got its hind limbs, that is hand. Okay, well developed, well developed. Okay. And they make most of its uses. Okay. So what is unique about Hulog Gibbon? The thing which is unique about Hulog Gibbon is that it uses its hands more and it is using its hand for its movement. Hands are used for movement across forest. So it needs a series of series of trees for its movement. So what actually is happening is that this Hulog Gibbons Wildlife Century, which is Holangapar Gibbon Wildlife Century, is actually getting divided into two parts because of building of railway bridges and also because of extraction of oil. Oil. So because of extraction of oil and building of bridges, what will have actually happen? The forest corridor connecting the two different parts of the wildlife century will get divided into two parts. And since Gibbon don't use legs, they use hand to cross and they rarely set their foot on ground. They rarely set their foot on ground. Okay, so if there is no canopy connecting the two parts, okay, so what will happen? There will be gene pool depression, gene pool depression. And because of that, its population will be under threat, under threat. Okay, so in order to solve this issue, either this railway line should not come up and also the extraction of oil should be immediately stopped. But the thing is that railway line, even if it comes up, there is a solution that there should be an artificial canopy created for its movement, for its movement. That is artificial forest corridor will be there. And the hulog gibbon can travel from one portion, that is A portion, to the B portion of wildlife century. This is Holanga Path Wildlife Gibbon Century, and it is in Jorhat, that is Upper Assam. Okay. So the most important thing about is that majority of the things which is available you will find that there are two species two species of hulog gibbon gibbon and it is told everywhere whatever material you choose it will be said that there are two species of hulog gibbon in india which is not actually true okay in india we have only one species of hulog gibbon Okay, see, uh, here I have given a historical reference. 
that there was an american naturalist r harlan who characterized uh, the various things related to pollock gibbon in 1834 okay and it was always said that pollock gibbon can be divided into two parts okay one is eastern pollock gibbon which is found in arunachal pradesh okay another is western pollock gibbon and it is distribution in uh, distributed in elsewhere in northeast okay in meghalaya also meghalaya also you will find there is pollock gibbon pollock gibbon among the garo tribes are considered as totem totem means something which has got sacred value okay for example we worship as hindu siblings the cross among christians is also considered as totem it is sacred in nature okay so among the garos of meghalayas pollock gibbon okay is considered as totem and they believe that they have originated from them okay so center for cellular and microbiology in 2021 i have told you during corona times it was well established that there is only one species of pollock gibbon in india okay there is no two species of pollock gibbon in india and it has gone through the genetic study of this two types supposedly two types of pollock gibbon and found out that there is no genetic difference after the gene analysis and it established that there is only one type of pollock gibbon okay it debunked the earlier research that the eastern pollock gibbon was a separate species based on the color of its coat no centuries millions and millions of year, uh, year back pollock be given those who migrated towards the upper hills of arunachal okay because of the weather condition which was very cold over there their coat became of darker color darker color compared to those pollock given which remained in brahmaputra valley other part of northeast nagaland manipur mizoram tripura and meghalaya okay so it has been well established so anywhere where you are reading that there are two species of pollock given it is factually wrong another the red list of iucn shows that there are two types of pollock given western one is endangered and eastern one is vulnerable this has not been changed yet okay but this has been established and it, it has also come in the hindu if you will search you will get this report as well so basically i wanted to explain you which i believe that upsc will ask that there are two types of pollock given in india no it is wrong there is only one species of pollock given found in india understood yes sir see this is today's headlines okay and what has been the headline the headline is that the world bank has projected that india's economic growth will be around 7% okay and this is something which is very satisfying but what are the possible reason that india's economic growth will be around 7% see the thing is that uh around the world there is slow down of economy around the world around the world there is slow down of economy slow down of economy okay but in india there will be growth why see india is going to invest a very larger amount around in terms of rupee 11 trillion rupee has been sanctioned for capital infrastructure okay that is the capital expenditure will be of 3.4% of our gdp which is very huge okay uh, you guys will be surprised that a major portion of our budget goes to interest payment okay which is not creating any asset whereas capital expenditure that is capex in short is creating asset 
okay that is building of roads building of roads okay isme sabse zyada important kya hai pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana there are many villages where the population has increased and now they are eligible for pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana previously it was considered that if there is 250 people in that village it should get connected to the main road through the road over there so now this has also changed so kindly check it or we will discuss it in any other session now coming back to this we will also have dams four lanes all across india you are you are fi finding four lanes okay airports okay other uh, infrastructure being created in agriculture canals warehouses where houses okay so because of this kind of expenditure what will happen good amount of requirement will be there from the core industries core sectors what are these core sector for building of road you need cement you need steel you need iron for steel you need coal okay electricity there are eight core sectors okay and when you build road because of building of road you provide employment okay and for mining of coals iron mining may be employment milta hai theek hai so these all industries are linked because of capital expenditure and other public expenditure in real estate formation real estate household investment that means many people in india will go and they also want to create or get house for that also do they are going to spend so because of this there will be larger demand for eight core sectors and because of larger demand of eight core sectors what will happen government expenditure will go and this expenditure will be income to larger public okay and because of this income demand will go up when demand will go up manufacturing of goods will go up and also what will happen services demand will also go up when demand for both goods and services will go up what will happen gdp will grow see we are the largest populous country in the world largest populous country of the world so because there are so many people they are also demanding so the supply side demand supply side demand will also go up because there are many people whose demand is more than the supply also if the government bring down certain tax or some other things which government leverages so people will go for more demand for those goods and services when there is more demand what will happen the economy will grow demand is the most important factor demand is the most important factor for any economic growth okay but demand alone is also not sufficient okay the government should create demand government should create demand okay and you can have also seen manrega i have uh, uh, explained that how manrega was able to create demand by generating income to the ruler ruler public so because of this world bank is predicting that in spite of global downtime or slow down indian economy will grow world bank is also predicting that there is increase in employment opportunity for women okay post lockdown post lockdown but there will be stagnancy in job opportunity okay unemployment will be high as it is still around 17% okay because we again have largest amount of youth in the world we can't provide each of the, them job with this kind of growth we need to be in double digit 
to provide job opportunities to them so there are certain lacunas also which we think the government over a period of time will try to correct and we will see such kind of news as well okay so hope this topic is clear to all of you if there is any issue let me know okay i will go to the next topic see uh, there is this news today and the news is uh, that what has happened in assam is that there are certain amount of a certain number of people those who have been declared as uh, foreigners okay so the there is a foreigner tribunal and 28 people have been sent to the transit camps okay and who are these 28 people time and again we get it in news that there are people those who are considered to be foreigners in assam so they are basically called mia muslim though it is a derogatory term i am using here to explain you who are mia muslims see mia muslims are those muslims those who are bengali speaking speaking and they are non native non native to assam okay and they are considered that majority of them not all of them but majority of them have illegally crossed bangladesh border and entered india see many people will doubt it but there are certain cases also you can go and search in in youtube you will find that there are few Beng bangladeshi boys which have produced a video on youtube that it is so easy to come inside india in meghalaya and they have also rented a bike over there you go and search there is a video over there so in assam there is separation among muslims okay one is known as mia muslims okay and the other is known as indigenous muslims mia muslims and indigenous muslims so mia muslim i have explained those who are considered to be non native people of assam supposed to be illegally crossed over to assam from bangladesh and they are bengali speaking so who are indigenous muslims see these muslim those who are indigenous muslim their mother tongue is assamese okay and they trace their ancestries to assam and it is as back to the time of ahom kingdom that is 1228 ad and we all know that uh, ahoms defeated mughal six times okay and lachit barfukan has been supposed to give crushing defeat to mughal soldiers led by raja ram singh raja ram singh okay in battle of sarai ghat somewhere in 1671 okay so what happened is that it is 1671 only okay so they are categorized into five types desi sayyad goria muria and jolaha okay jolaha muslims okay so who are desis desis are considered to be belonging to rajbansi tribe coach rajbansi coach bihar coach bihar is somewhere between the junction of assam and west bengal okay and that area is supposed to be dominated by rajbansis okay at this ali match was a coach bihari chieftain and he was defeated by bakhtiyar khilji in the early 13th century and he accepted islam so those people who belong to his family and accepted islam they are known as desis in assam okay then there are sayyad muslims of assam and who are these sayyad muslims these sayyad muslims are the one those who are descendant of the early sufi preachers okay 
who came to Assam in 15th century and 17th century. These preachers were Sayyid Madan Peer. Okay. Second one is Moiddin Baghdadi. He is also known as Azan Peer. Okay. Then we have Goria. And this is always mentioned, you will find in your social media also. And nowadays it has started coming up in a derogatory language because of the situations related to crime and all. And it is being attributed to certain sections of the society by the chief minister himself. But that is also, that is something also which should not be done. And there is an article also today regarding your right to speech. Okay. That you should not speak something until unless you are aware that it is not going to do harm. Okay. But anyway, come to the topic. So who are these Goryas? So these Goryas are basically the Muslims, those who came with the Mughal invasions and were defeated by the Ahom kingdom. Okay. And they were taken as prisoners. And since majority of them came from Gore in ancient Bengal, so they were known as Goria. And among them, few started working with brass and they are known as Moriyas. And till today, they are country, continuing with their work with brass and they are known as Moria. Julahas are, are Adivasis. Those who took up Islam, okay, and they started practicing it, so they are known as Julahas, okay. So these are the basic five types of Asmi's Muslim, which you will find. Maybe you will get a question in your exam, uh, Goria, Moria, and Desi belongs to which kind of people, Assam, Western Ghat, Eastern Ghat, or Northeast, this kind of question may come. I will give you an added information the muslims of manipur okay they are known as panghals this is again a derogatory terms okay panghal muslims but you should know because there can be question regarding uh, panghals goria or there can be question again regarding chin chin people so chin people are christian people those who are coming for, from Myanmar and settling in Manipur and Mizoram. Okay. So let's move to the next topic. Next topic is Japan is creating. Okay. So Japan is actually creating new heat resistance variety of rice. See, Japan is a developed Asian country. Okay. Very few countries in Asia are considered to be developed. So, what is actually happening is that Japan has a good amount of population. Okay. And also tourism is high. And rice is staple diet over there. Just in almost 70 to 60% of India, rice is a staple diet. You will ask people, kya khayega, bolega, bhat khayega. You ask people in Punjab, in Delhi, kya khayega, bolega, roti khayega. So they are identifying themselves with their staple diet. So there is huge demand for rice over there. Unfortunately, Japan is not blessed with fertile land in large amount. Okay. So what they do is that they import 60% of their food resource from outside. And because of increase in temperature in recent times, what has happened? Because of increase in temperature in recent times, Rice production in Japan has not been so good. Okay. Why? The temperature increased beyond the temperature range of rice. You know what is the limiting factor in rice? If you go to South India, in India, you will find temperature is high. In Bihar, Odisha also temperature is high. Rice is being grown over there. You go to the hills of Arunachal or Kohima you will find that rice is grown over there. So the limiting factor is rainfall also. Okay. So what Japan is coming up? Japan is coming up with the heat resistance variety of rice. Why I'm asking you this question? See, they may ask you where you will find which country has come up with heat resistance variety of rice. Second, China last year, 
China last year went for perennial variety of rice. Perennial variety that means you don't have to cut the paddy after three or four months of ripening. It will continue to give you rice and it will continue for at least four to five years. And for that they have needed a variety of rice which was present in wild of African continent. And from there, they got the variety, they cross hybridized it, how hybridization of rice is done. See, in rice, what actually they will do is that it is produced when the egg is fertilized from the pollen of one rice plant. Okay. The egg belongs to one rice plant and the pollen is taken from the anther of another rice plant. Okay. So cross breeding is happening. And the new product which will come will have the quality of both mother and father. Okay. And through this heat resistance variety of rice has come up in Asa, in Japan. Okay. Now moving to the next slide. Okay. See. Uh, there is a news that Google has been accused of being an illegal monopoly. So how they are doing it? See, Google is actually doing what is that? Google has got huge amount of money. For corruption, you need good amount of money. Since we all don't have money, we are non-corrupt people. That is the reality. If given opportunity, 99% of the people on this world will become corrupt. We are honest only because we don't have that opportunity to get corrupt. Okay. Coming back to this. So Google has huge amount of money. So what it does whenever Apple is manufacturing its phone. Okay. Or some another Samsung is manufacturing its phone. Okay. The Google pays them billion of dollar. Google pays them pays. Apple and Samsung billion of dollar so that they make it as default engine search. Okay. And Google is actually paying them. Last year they paid around in 2022. They paid around dollar 20 billion to whom to Apple alone to make them as default search engine. Do you think is this a conducive environment for other search engine to compete? Will the other search engine be able to compete with this kind of resources which is available to Google? Is it possible? No. no sir. So it is impacting what? It is impacting the competition with the other search engine. So how it is unfair to the customer. See, customer is not having choice. Customer go to pata hi nahi hai. Okay. Customer go to pata hi nahi ki dousra tarah ka search engine available hai. Ab mein aapko ek example dunga, jo exactly ye fit nahi hota hai, par aap 5 saal piche jau, 5 nahi, 10 saal piche jau, thik hai? Or maybe you go to 10 or 15 years back, you will find that cellular service which we were getting was of so many types. BSNL, Hutch, Vodafone. Okay. Airtel, Aircel, Tata Docomo. Okay. We were having so much. But today, if we ask someone, they will say either Airtel or Jio. Right? So what is happening? The other companies have been totally eliminated. And today, I should not say it's a personal thing. And it is also no one to comment that after spending so much of money in his son's marriage, he increased the price of mobile services. And people all of a sudden are looking for BSNL SIM. 
they are trying to port their sim to bsnl there is a report that people are asking for porting of their number to bsnl why this is happening and why reliance is able to do it because reliance does not have a competitor right now ठीक है Netflix uh, अभी इनका Disney के साथ tie up हो गया है Disney के साथ tie up हो गया है Reliance के पास ही IPL का license था और Disney के पास भी IPL का license था both have merged and what will happen the price of advertisement for IPL will go high and which has to be monitored by Supreme Court or other courts because uh, this was only given uh, go ahead after the supreme court said that you will have to uh, follow these these things then competition commission of india will be there to check into these matter so i am just letting you know where you can quote this and since we are going to have this current affairs program for next till the examination is there so may so many doubts of you will be over and it we will be covering so many static portion stuff also so today it is a homework that you see what is competition commission of india okay now again there was this article so the article was because of the statement made by rbi deputy governor who is the deputy governor of rbi md patra अब आप में से कोई मेरे से नहीं पूछेगा कि इनका पूरा नाम क्या है आप गूगल कर लीजिए ठीक है वॉट इज ही सेंग दैट प्राइवेट सेक्टर बोरोइंग इज लाइकली टू इंक्रीज ऑन कैप एक्स पुश ओके सो वॉट इज प्राइवेट सेक्टर सी इट इज गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट इज डूइंग वॉट कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर हाई अमाउंट ऑफ कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर Simultaneously, we are seeing that there is a report which says that our economy will grow at seven percent. ठीक है? तो जब आपका growth हो रहा है, आप यहाँ individual देखिए, ठीक है? Individual. You are your business is growing, okay? At a very high rate. So, will you take loan from others to do your business? Tell me, right or wrong? Will you take loan from others to do your business when your business is growing? They were simple. No, sir. Hai. Yes, sir. नहीं लोगे loan. डूबते नाव पर कोई पैसा नहीं लगाता है. जब आपका business बहुत grow कर रहा है ना, तभी आपको बहुत लोग सस्ते में loan देंगे. The person who is the richest person in Guwahati or Delhi or Mumbai. If he goes and asks for loan to anyone, people will be more than willing to give loan. If I go and ask loan from you, people will you give me? नहीं दोगे भाई, because लौटाना भी तो जरूरी है ना, right? तो जब Indian economy is growing at a very fast pace, right? Seven percent is huge, okay? Not big enough to pull all the people from our country out of poverty but still good enough huge enough when the there is economically slow down ha happening everywhere okay so government is doing what capital expenditure for example individual who is earning good is building shops concrete structure or house okay so people will be more than willing to give loan okay here also when there is capital expenditure and government will try to do what government will try to take loan and loan will come at a cheaper price so who will will be more than willing to give loan if cm of uttar pradesh will ask loan government of uttar pradesh will ask loan from you or reliance hiru bhai ammani ka ladka mukesh ammani will ask loan from you whom will you give ammani नहीं आप सरकारी आदमी को लोन दोगे सरकार को दोगे इंडियन गवर्नमेंट अगर आपसे लोन मांगेगा तो आप किसको दोगे इंडियन गवर्नमेंट को दोगे या प्राइवेट सेक्टर को दोगे अरे यू विल बी मोर देन विलिंग गवर्नमेंट को लोन दोगे ना क्योंकि नोट छाप के वापस दे सकता है वो 
मैंने अंबानी का एग्जाम्पल दिया था टू शो दस वी है सरकारी वाई यू आर गैज आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर गवर्नमेंट जॉब वाई नॉट यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर कैट एंड गेट इन टू द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ रिलायंस बिकॉज देर इज अ डिफरेंट चार्म टू सरकारी वॉट जॉब सिक्योरिटी तो यहाँ पर भी मनी सिक्योरिटी है ठीक है सो वेन गवर्नमेंट इज ग्रोइंग गवर्नमेंट इज ग्रोइंग मीन्स गवर्नमेंट इज डूइंग कैपिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सो जब भी आप घर बनाओगे आपको पैसे का क्रंच होगा तो आप लोन लोगे तो लोन लोगे तो कौन देगा आपको लोन कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर ज्यादा है तो लोन कौन देगा आपको प्राइवेट लोग देंगे प्राइवेट मतलब हाउस होल्ड जो इंडियन जनता है वो लोन देगी राइट right? अपने इकोनॉमी में क्या है गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर है एक्सटर्नल सेक्टर है हाउस होल्ड सेक्टर है यही है और कौन है तो जनता लोन कैसे देगी बैंक में अपना पैसा रखेगी और गवर्नमेंट का बॉन्ड्स खरीदेगी राइट सिक्योरिटीज खरीदेगी तो गवर्नमेंट वहां से पैसा ले लेगा सिक्योरिटीज कौन देगा गवर्नमेंट का जनरेट आर करेगा गवर्नमेंट के नाम से और मार्केट से पैसा निकलवाएगा ठीक है यही नहीं होगा नॉट ओनली पीपल ऑफ इंडिया वुड लाइक टू इन्वेस्ट इन इंडिया पीपल ऑफ कैनेडा इज विल ऑल्सो लाइक टू इन्वेस्ट इन इंडिया वाई इंडियन इकोनॉमी इज ग्रोइंग और पैसा किसी को काटता नहीं है सो इवन पीपल फ्रॉम कैनेडा विल कम द फंड मैनेजर्स फ्रॉम कैनेडा विल कम एंड इन्वेस्ट इन इंडियन इकोनॉमी बिकॉज ऑफ हाई कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर विल गवर्नमेंट विल बी नीड ऑफ मनी राइट एंड दैट मनी विल कम फ्रॉम प्राइवेट सेक्टर ओके एंड फॉरन कैपिटल्स फॉरन कैपिटल्स कैसे आएगा एफ डी आई और एफ आई आई ठीक है इन दो तरह से फॉरन कैपिटल आएगा और एक होता है डोमेस्टिक बोरोइंग इंडिया की जनता से पैसा लेना और एक होता है एक्सटर्नल सेक्टर ठीक है तो गवर्नमेंट के लिए दोनों क्या है प्राइवेट बोरोइंग है ठीक है समझ में आया या नहीं आया सर ये एफ और एफ का डिफरेंस सर है क्या सर हाँ बहुत डिफरेंस है वो कभी और बताऊंगा अभी ये बताओ कि आपको समझ में आया या नहीं आया हाँ सर जो मैंने आपको हाँ, हाँ, देखो एफ क्या होता है ना वो वोला टाइल नहीं है एफ क्या है ना वोला टाइल है देखो सिर्फ स्टॉक मार्केट ऑफ इंडिया में इन्वेस्ट करना एक तरह से एफ है क्यों पैसा आज लगाया स्टॉक मार्केट में शेयर खरीदा बॉन्ड खरीदा कल बेच के भाग गया ठीक है एफ का मतलब क्या होता है ना इसका क्राइटेरिया है लेकिन एफ का मेजर मतलब क्या है मैं इंडिया में आया खुद एक फैक्ट्री लगाया या इन्वेस्ट किया तो जब तक फैक्ट्री अप होगा प्रॉफिट नहीं देगा तो मैं भागूंगा नहीं भागूंगा और मैंने टेन परसेंट जो इसमें लागत है इन्वेस्टमेंट है उससे ज्यादा लगाया तो इतना जल्दी पैसा लेके नहीं ना भागूंगा आई विल बी लुकिंग हियर फॉर द फैक्ट्री टू ग्रो प्रोड्यूस एंड गिव आउटपुट बट वेन आई हैव कम विल आई कम ओनली विथ द मनी नो आई विल ऑल्सो गिव माई टेक्नोलॉजी वाई बिकॉज आई नीड प्रॉफिट right so for that i will also give my technology because this will give me edge not only technology i will also give my management skill people from south india are considered to run restaurants better from the north indians especially in mumbai if you see majority of the restaurant owners are from udupi where is udupi in karnataka okay and it is famous for people those who have created huge restaurants okay right so why they are created a huge restaurant their management skill in hospitality is better than the people from north india it is considered just i am telling you because they are in that business for a longer period of time for example marwadis are considered to be better in business compared to rest of indians gujarati तो वो जब पैसा लगाएंगे फॉरनर्स दे विल ब्रिंग देयर मैनेजमेंट आल्सो ओके दे विल आल्सो ब्रिंग देयर नो हाउ स्टैंडर्ड ऑपरेटिंग प्रोसीजर टू गिव बेटर रिजल्ट आर यू एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड और नॉट यस सर सर तो इसी कंटेक्स में सर जैसा कल का क्लास पे बताया था सिंगापुर एक एशियन एमोंग एशियन वो सिक्स देखो सिंगा, देखो सिंगापुर सिंगापुर में गलत वो अलग कहानी है सिंगापुर जो है ना इंडिया का सबसे ज्यादा एफडीआई कंट्रीब्यूशन है सिंगापुर से सबसे ज्यादा पैसा दस परसेंट से ज्यादा इन्वेस्टमेंट जो होता है ना किसी भी चीज में उसको हाँ, भी एफ मान लेते हैं ठीक है मतलब उसका फैक्ट्री वगैरह सब आएगा क्या सर मतलब जैसा आपने क्राइटेरिया है क्राइटेरिया है 
एफ डी आई का क्राइटेरिया है सिंगापुर से जो सबसे ज्यादा इन्वेस्टमेंट आ रहा है वो अलग रीजन से आ रहा है दैट रीजन इज डिफरेंट फ्लिपकार्ट का नाम सुना है हाँ सर इट इज वॉज फाउंडेड बाई टू इंडियंस बंसल फ्रेंड्स इन आई आई टी मुंबई और समवेयर कानपुर राइट आई आई टी दिल्ली सर बोथ वेर बंसल एंड देर आर फ्रेंड्स ओके वेर इज दिस कंपनी रजिस्टर्ड सिंगापुर सिंगापुर में रजिस्टर्ड ठीक है तो ये जो सिंगापुर से एफ डी आई इंडिया में आता है हाइएस्ट है उसका रीजन अलग है ठीक है रीजन पे मत जाओ जैसे पहले मॉरिसस से आता था तो मॉरिसस में क्या होता था मैं किसी का नाम मैं किसी का नाम नहीं ले रहा हूँ आपको समझा रहा हूँ मुंबई में एक्स बिजनेसमैन है उसका भाई वाई बिजनेसमैन खोल लिया यहाँ पे कंपनी सब्सिडरी ठीक है मॉरिसस में यहाँ का पैसा से टैक्स बचा के यहाँ पैसा लेते गया बताए कि ये जो सब्सिडरी है इंडिया में ऑपरेट कर रही है और प्रॉफिट कमा रही है ठीक है और वापस से ये पैसा ले आता था यहाँ रीराउटिंग ऑफ मनी टू सेव टैक्स तो ये भी तो एफ हो गया ना तो मॉरिसस नंबर वन एफ था एक समय इंडिया का सिंगापुर में क्या हो रहा है वो डिटेल डिस्कशन करेंगे कभी ठीक है अभी करंट अफेयर्स टॉपिक चल रहा है आपको बस ये समझना है ठीक है ओके सर सो दिस यू हैव अंडरस्टूड ओके यस सर हाँ सो नो व्हाट आई वांट इज दैट यू गाइस शुड आल्सो गो एंड रीड न्यूज़पेपर्स ओके व्हाट न्यूज़पेपर एडिटोरियल सेक्शंस 